Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are from Lex Hermosa, consists of four members, which are Farah Hanim binti Nur Zaidi, Nur Farah Kanja binti Mazlah, Nur Elia binti Muhammad Azan, and me myself, Ala Izati binti Nur Ridwan. So, as for the introduction, Malaysia is a country that practices a parliamentary democracy governed under a constitutional monarch, where Yang Dipertuan Agong (YDPA) is the head of the state. Malaysia practice constitutional monarchy where the written constitution, which is the federal constitution, is the supreme law of the land. It basically originated from the system of Malay kingship, which existed as early as the first century. Their powers waned during the colonial period, but somehow being partially able by the Merdeka Constitution 1957. The YDPA in Malaysia is unique from the other countries as the YDPA is appointed among the sultans in the states of Malaysia and elected by the Conference of Rulers. The monarchy is distinctive in that the nine hereditary sultans should choose a young Dipertuan Agong for a five-year term from among themselves. The king of Malaysia and head of state, the young Dipertuan Agong, will have a five-year reign. Each young Dipertuan Agong holds the throne for five years before kindly resigning to give his brother rulers the chance to assume the young Dipertuan Agong's role on the national state. Therefore, the young Dipertuan Agong needed to have a justification for leaving the office if he desired to abbreviate the length of his reign. Whereas in the United Kingdom, multiple centuries of constitutional conflict successfully transformed an absolute monarchy into a constitutional one. The British monarchy is viewed as multi serving as a figurehead nowadays. The Queen is prohibited from directly interfering in governmental management by law and convention, and she is required to maintain her independence from political parties. The King or Queen reigns but does not rule. The British monarch generally follows the advice of her ministers, with the exception of a small number of circumstances where there is a margin of discretion, which discretion the Queen typically does not exercise. Okay, so next, the requirements to be a YDPA. The following are the eligibility criteria for the Conference of Rulers to appoint a ruler as the Yang Dipertuan Agung. First, only a ruler may be elected if he consents to be elected. Only rulers are allowed to vote. If a ruler is unable to attend the election meeting, he may designate another ruler to vote in his place. Normally, the order of selection is determined by the seniority of each ruler in terms of ring land. This rule is no longer applicable once all state rulers have served as the Yang Dipertuan Agong. During the election, the keeper of the ruler's seal distributes ballot papers with only one candidate on them and each ruler is asked to indicate whether the candidate is fit to be elected as the Yang Dipertuan Agong or not. Before the ruler presiding over the election meeting, can offer him the position of Yang Dipertuan Agong. The nominee must receive a majority of five votes if the successful nominee declines the offer or if the nominated ruler does not receive the required majority of votes, the voting process is restarted with the nomination of the second most senior ruler on the list of ruler's seniority. Only after the ruler accepts the offer of office from the Yang Dipertuan Agong is the process completed. The conference then appoints the ruler as the Yang Dipertuan Agong for a five-year term. Next, the appointment of the YDPA. According to Article 32 Clause 3 of the Constitution, the Yang Dipertuan Agong shall be elected by the Conference of Rulers for a term of five years, but may at any time resign his office by writing under his hand address to Conference of Rulers or be removed from office by the Conference of Rulers and shall cease to hold office on ceasing to be a ruler and shall cease to hold office on ceasing to be a ruler Malaysia is a constitutional monarchy with parliamentary democracy. The Yang Dipertuan Agong positions as head of state is not hereditary under the constitutional monarchy but is elected by the other rulers in the Conference of Rulers. The Conference of the Rulers which Majlis Raja Raja is a council made up of the nine state of rulers of Negeri Sembilan, Selangor, Perlis, Terengganu, Kedah, Kelantan, Pahang, Johor and Perak as well as the governors of the other four states of Penang, Melaka, Sabah and Sarawak. 
only the nine state of rulers are permitted to vote in the election of the Yang Dipertuan Agung and to run as candidates, whereas the governors of the other four states are not permitted to participate in matters concerning the election or removal of the Yang Dipertuan Agung or his deputy. The Yang Dipertuan Agung may resign from office at any time or he may be removed from office by the Conference of Rulers if at least five members of the conference vote in favour of it. As a result, if vacancies occur in the offices of the Yang Dipertuan Agung, the election of a new Yang Dipertuan Agung shall take place no later than four weeks from the date the office becomes vacant. The election process as outlined in the third schedule of the Constitution and Conference of Rulers Regulations. The positions of the Yang Dipertuan Agung is passed down on a rotational basis with each of the nine state rulers taking the helm for a full term of five years. The election list contains the order in which this rotation moves. When the position of the Yang Dipertuan Agung becomes vacant due to the expiration of the five-year term, death in office, resignation or removal of the Yang Dipertuan Agung, the state ruler at the top of the election list is given priority and offered the position of Yang Dipertuan Agung. Unlike in the United Kingdom, where the monarchy knows no break in continuity and a new monarch's accession is backdated to the date of the previous sovereign's death, time gaps may exist in Malaysia between the end of one reign and the start of another. This is due to the existence of deputy king under Article 33, Clause 1 to perform the functions of the king during any vacancy in the office of the Yang Dipertuan Agong. Despite his high position, the Yang Dipertuan Agong is subject to a number of legal constraints. For example, during his reign as king, he is prohibited from exercising his state functions except in three areas which Islam, amendments to his state's constitution and the appointment of a regent or council of regency. The Yang Dipertuan Agong has no immunity from civil or criminal proceedings in his personal capacity since the Constitution Amendment Act 1993 took effect on 30 March 1993. The repeal of immunities is no retroactive as it cannot be in relation to criminal act under Article 7, 7 Clause 2 of the Chapter of Fundamental Rights. The ruler who accepts the nomination must then obtain at least five votes from the other state's rulers or his proxy, with the ballots being secretly cast into a ballot box using unnumbered ballot papers. The ballot papers are destroyed in the presence of the rulers immediately after the election results are announced. Without going into too much detail, it is worth noting that the order of the election list has been changed once before, with the first and original election list no longer being applicable today. The second reconstituted election list is still in use today and is organized in the order of the states in which the first to ninth Yang Dipertuan Agong resided. Next, I will be presenting on the roles and powers of the Yang Dipertuan Agong YDPA. I will state the provision and briefly explain the roles and powers of the YDPA, but the detailed explanation will be in our written assignment. Firstly, Article 32, Clause 1 of the Federal uh, constitution, it prohibits the YDPA from being subjected to proceedings in any court other than the Special Court. Secondly, Article 3, Clause 3 and Clause 5 of the Federal Constitution, YDPA serves as the head of Islam in Kuala Lumpur, Labuan, Putrajaya, Malacca, Penang, Sabah, Sarawak and his own state. And the case that can illustrate this is in titular Roman Catholic, Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur and Menteri Dalam Negeri and another 2010. Next is Article 33A Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution. The YDPA must resign from his position if he is indicted for a crime. Furthermore, Article 66 Clause 1 and Clause 4 of the Federal Constitution the YDPA also has 30 days to provide its approval to a law that has passed from both Houses of Parliament. Uh, and we can see this in the case of Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim and Government of Malaysia and Another's 2020. Moreover, Article 40, Clause 2 of the Federal Constitution, the YDPA has brought discretionary powers including the ability to choose the Prime Minister and dissolve the Parliament. In the case of Abdul Ghani Ali and others, and Public Prosecutor 1968. Next is Article 43, Clause 2, Clause A of the Federal Constitution. 
The Prime Minister shall be appointed by the YDPA and we can see this in the case of M. Kula Segaran and Datuk Seri Abdul Wahid Omar and another's 2030. Moreover, under Article 150 of the Federal Constitution, the YDPA has the authority to declare a state of emergency. And last but not least, Article 41 of the Federal Constitution, the YDPA as the Supreme Command of Armed Forces. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Farakali Dabiti Mazlah, metric number 2117452. We'll be presenting about the removal of YDPA in the aftermath. The YDPA is subject to removal from the Conference of Rulers. This can be done at any time and the decision cannot be challenged because the Constitution states that the members of the Conference of Rulers may act at their discretion to remove the YDPA from office. All that is required is the support of at least five members of the conference. It is unfortunate that the removal office lacks adequate safeguards. In no other constitution known to us, maybe the supreme head of state be removed by a simple majority without even the need to state a reason for the removal. And especially when one of those removing the supreme head of state will be eligible to succeed to that office. There are arguments for limiting the discretionary powers of the Conference of Rulers members when they remove the YDPA from office. In addition, the Constitution stipulates that the YDPA must resign if he ceases to be the ruler. Although the Timbalan YDPA must vacate the office of Timbalan upon ceasing to be a ruler, the Constitution makes no provision for Timbalan YDPA's removal from office. There appears to be no good reason why provisions for the removal of the Timbalan from office should not have been included in the Constitution, uh, in the same manner as provisions for the removal of the YDPA. So the argument that the Timbalan will only perform the duties of YDPA for extremely brief periods and therefore disqualification will not significantly tarnish the office of the YDPA is in our opinion completely unconvincing for a number of reasons. Firstly, the Timbalan cannot assume the office of the YDPA unless the monarch has actually been absent for more than 15 days. The constitution's drafters anticipated the possibility of a longer absence, but it, it appears that they did not foresee the possibility of disqualifications attaching to a Timbalan after his election, nor did they provide for his removal from office. So secondly, while a Timbalan is in office, even if disqualified, a second Timbalan cannot be elected because the constitution does not allow for two Timbalans. It is actually true that the YDPA, in exercise of functions ordinance 1957, provides that the ruler whose state is first on the election list can exercise the functions of Timbalan if the Timbalan is unable to do so due to illness absence from the Federation for more than 15 days or any other cause, but it is not specified it will determine when the Timbalan is unable to exercise the functions of the fight YDPA for other reasons. And the decision appears to be left for the Timbalan himself as Section 7 states, a ruler who is exercising the sovereign functions under this ordinance shall cease to exercise such function as the YDPA or the Deputy Supreme Head resumes or assumes such functions. So apparently the YDPA and the Timbalan YDPA have discretion here. Finally, we would like to suggest that it would be improper to allow a Timbalan to remain in office if it is discovered after his election that he is actually ineligible to be elected by DPA due to some disqualification. The constitution declares a ruler is disqualified to be elected the supreme head unless he would not be qualified to be elected by DPA. So there is no reason why a disqualification which would prevent a ruler from being elected Timbalan should not prevent him from continuing in the office of Timbalan. And the following amendments to the constitutions are suggested in order to allow for the removal of the Timbalan YDPA after the words addressed to the Conference of Rulers in Article 33 Clause 2, the words all be removed from office should be added. And after the words all the election in Article 38 Clause 6a, the words and removal should be added. These additions may actually be very slight indeed, but they will have the effect of permitting the removal of the YDPA from office if it is ever found necessary and of resolving any ambiguity that may arise when it is found after the election of the Timbalan that he is unsuitable to assume the office of the YDPA. I think that would be all from me. Thank you.
not only for the conclusion, to sum up YDPE and Malay rulers are constitutional rulers as their positions are created in accordance with the federal constitution and most importantly, they are acting on the advice of the cabinet at the federal level and executive council for state levels. We can clearly see that the power of the Yang Di Pertuan Agong are distinguished between two categories which are discretionary and non-discretionary power of Yang Di Pertuan Agong. By referring to Article 40, Clause 2, Paragraph A, B and C of the Federal Constitution, we can indicate that the Yang Di Pertuan Agong has a discretionary power to act according to his power and not bound by the decisions of the Prime Minister. I think that's all from us. Thank you.